Hello and welcome to LetMeBoreYouToSleep.com My name is Jason Newland This is Let Me Bore You To Sleep Please only listen to this wonderful experience When you can safely close your eyes Now, the um, it's been a bit of a weird sleep for me, so I've just been up for about an hour, and uh, as you you may know that I generally generally sleep during the day and make recordings at night. Well, or two things I should say. Don't go to sleep on a full stomach. It's last night, early hours, and I don't normally do this. I don't know what was going through my head. But about five o'clock, I cooked some chips or... Uh, potato, you know, fries, chips, whatever you want to call them, in the oven, and uh, had a bit, a bit of pizza. So I chomped that down, expecting to stay awake for, you know, a few more hours. But I felt so tired. By about six o'clock, I just had to go to sleep. I had to go to bed. I was just so tired. And yeah, it was uh, uncomfortable because I, I, I don't. I, I guess my stomach wasn't full, as far as I didn't eat a lot, and it probably was fairly digested by by that time, maybe. But just. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't a comfortable experience. And then since well, I got woken up which happens to happens to happen fairly regular during the day by banging. All I can say it sounds it sounded like someone hitting a brick kind of like a bash in a brick you know like if you see someone brick laying and you see, they're tapping the brick maybe breaking the bricks and that kind of but like constant you know bang 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 and then not bang bang because that's not the sound of a brick is it but Brick, 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 brick. Maybe that's better. You might be able to hear it in the background. It's still going on now. And that was at 11. Because I looked at my clock, my watch, and my phone. The thing with the numbers on, which move slowly every 60 seconds. Um, it's now 3.40. So that's been going on for, what, four or five hours. And I did go back to sleep. But I think I was incorporating it into my sleep. And it's terrible, but I really kind of nearly went out there. (laughs) I nearly had that. um, Because when I was younger, I used to be, I'd have been out there. Sort of uh, letting them know. That I didn't appreciate their noise, but of course I don't use the word noise anymore. I use the word sound because I'm so perfect. So, and it was kind of surprised me because I'm usually quite good these days. There was some. I think it's because it kept going on and on. It wasn't just like 
a bit of noise and then some quiet. It's just been constant for five hours. It almost sounds like building work's being done. And I can't go over there. I can't I can't see what's going on over the fence from here. And I can't put my head over the fence. Obviously put my lift my head up off my shoulders, I'm not a words or gummage. But I can't, you know that would be a bit rude and I can't go around because I don't, you know, it's not my home. So I just have to kind of sit with it. So I think that's a fairly, maybe it's an important lesson or a useful exercise for me because generally I'm okay you know even when it's we have the council come round cutting the lawn you know it's 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 loud you know it's loud it's a loud sound those uh, trimmers and all that stuff but you know, logic does enter my head. It's like, well, I'm choosing to sleep during the day. I don't have to. Most people sleep at night. I'm in no position to complain to anybody if they're making noise during the day. So I generally, I kind of accept it. I was like, okay. And I just go back to sleep. Quite often I can sleep through pretty much anything. And even that, uh, today I slept through it. But it just kept, I woke up a couple of times. And I think I woke up probably, yeah, probably three times. And, uh, kind of caught me off guard a little bit. And you know, I suppose just being human, isn't it? Just being, just being a human being, I think it's natural sometimes. Um, I think even the calmest, calmest, most placid people in the world will occasionally get angry. And I'm not the calmest, most placid person in the world, so I think um, I'm doing all right. And I didn't go out start shouting or anything it's not really me but it kind of well maybe used to be a little bit when I was younger um yeah I was never a big fan of uh, I don't know see (laughs) noisy neighbours See, I suppose, because when I do the hypnosis sessions and stuff with for sleep, I do try to, uh, and I've done it myself, I've tried to change the word from noise to sound. So, you know, to take the emotional aspect out of it, to take the hostility out, the anger, you know, but... And I thought I'd record this while the banging's going on outside. And I've got all the windows closed, so it is the quietest it could be. Although, I do need the windows open because it's summer. Plus, I like to have the windows open. I like to have air coming in all year round, really. But I do wonder if maybe it's just uh, somebody just sitting there just banging something and they're not doing anything at all. I don't know. 
Maybe they were really bored. If it if it happened all the time, <laughs> uh, yeah, I probably it would be a different situation, but. But it's it's not. It's just a it's a temporary temporary thing, I hope. But you never know when you when you squash people together in a not squashed, but you know, when you have people living fairly close in a close environment then I suppose there's a degree of people wanting to create their own space because over there there's what is it one two three I think there's about twelve twelve flats twelve apartments or whatever Six downstairs, six upstairs, and they've all. And I think it's the downstairs have access to a little bit of grass, a little bit of garden. Like it's tight. It's a very just like a little strip of a strip of garden. Some of them put a uh, like shed up. You know, washing line. You know, that kind of stuff. Someone's built like a little garden. There was an elderly man out there when I first moved here. And he had like a proper garden going on. But he was on the end, so he had a bit of a bigger space. A bit more space because of the way the fencing was organised. But I just, uh, I can kind of understand it. But I do sometimes feel like shouting out the window, it's not a real garden. And then just hiding. Which would be a bit child, a little bit childish, possibly. Mildly, mildly childish. So that's kind of been what I've uh, enjoyed today so far. Hmm. So I'm kind of still working on stuff. I didn't, I didn't make any recordings last night or you know before I went to sleep um, because I was busy doing stuff online and I don't know that the, the evening uh, at one point at one point I was going to do something and then I had to you know Andre became very lively and started you know so I kind of go well, I can't do anything here until he calms down I don't think I did. Did I do anything yesterday? No, I didn't. Like, I mean, today. I did stuff yesterday. I made four recordings yesterday. But today, this is the thirst. The thirsty one that I've done. And uh, I'll probably do a couple of others, maybe. 
before the end of the day. But, uh, <sighs> I haven't had any any Coke today yet, so a can of Coke, I haven't had one. I'm drinking a coffee at the moment. It's a little bit, it's a bit cold now. But I got some, is it Claydendale? Cravendale milk. Because if you ever have, and I had this the other day, I got I got up and it was I don't know it was a very late it was a late a late up so I woke up quite late went into the kitchen and uh, put the kettle on put some yeah put some coffee in a cup some you know instant because I don't buy the one that takes you know the uh, in takes a while this one does coffee don't don't buy that that label that brand and uh, poured the water in I'm not sure if I put the sugar in f or not. Sometimes I don't put the sugar in until afterwards. Until after I put the milk in. But I did put the milk in after the coffee. But then I suppose most people do, don't they? Unless you've got a coffee pot with coffee in it. Then maybe you could put the milk in first. I don't know. Anyway, I went to pour the milk into the coffee, and it was just lumpy. It was uh, it's like a giant sea coal. I just done a big poo in there. It was that kind of ugh, really. Bleh. So I just got rid of that so I couldn't have any breakfast because I didn't have any didn't have any milk for the cereal that's so what I thought I know what I'll do I'll have a sandwich I'll have a sandwich because I had something in the fridge I could eat with the sandwich so I pulled the bread out of the cupboard that I'd bought a couple of days earlier put it onto the onto the plate I decided, I'm not sure if I used a small plate or a large plate because sometimes when I only make one sandwich, I'll only use a small plate. And when I make maybe two sandwiches, I'll use a, you know, a big plate, like a dinner, dinner plate, something that you'd have your dinner on. Or your lunch, I mean, or your breakfast even, if you was having uh, like a fried breakfast or a, a cooked breakfast or a steamed breakfast or a microwaved breakfast or a grilled breakfast. You know, it's it, if you was going to do that. But so, but we do call them dinner plates I do believe uh, not luncheon plates or um, breakfast plates or what's that other brunch brunch plates or supper plates you know when I was in Ireland living with Andre uh, Andre, the original Andre, and his parents. I couldn't believe that um, they. Wait a minute, Andre. 
Was Andre living there as well? Yeah, I think he was. I know that I was living there. Uh, and... Something that I've never done before, never experienced before, was supper. So we had dinner, like, you know, evening meal at probably half six. Yeah, Andre was there, because I remember I was, we used to watch The Simpsons on TV. And we'd have a good, have a good laugh. Um, then junior adverts would tickle each other. So it, it was very, it was great times. And uh, we'd have the evening meal about 6.30. And it was whatever, because his mum was a really good cook and just, you know, they really, it was a, a traditional, well, just a tradition. They just ate well, really ate well. And I remember the first day I was there, not the first night, because the first night I arrived by boat, by ferry, and because... Yeah, I got. Yeah, it's Dublin, isn't it? So I got, went to Dublin by ferry from. From. I think it was Wales. I think it was Holyhead in Wales. And I remember that journey actually because it was a long journey long 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 journey from London to Wales is quite a distance especially by road on a coach by train it's a lot shorter but by and it's still a lot fairly it's just still a fair distance but by by uh, coach it's a bit longer and I remember I got the so I got the train <clears throat> and I left I probably got the train at Forest Gate train station it led me to yeah, I had to get to Victoria. So I think I think Victoria bus station was where I had to go to to get the coach. I think. So I went to. I needed to get to the Victoria line. So I'm not sure how I got there. Possibly went to Oxford Circus and then. Is there a Victoria Line from Oxford Circus? But it's fairly easy. I mean, using a tube service, you know, with the, the tube maps, it's, it's kind of user-friendly. It really is. I mean, for pretty much anyone, I'd say. It's because it's colour-coordinated. So if let's say the red, the central line is red, and the what colours are they? Central colours red. The the uh, the northern line. Is is it black or brown? One of them. The Jubilee line is blue, I think. Um, 
the circle line is yellow but there's a yellow and green so there's a central line up uh, the circle line but there's another line so maybe it is yellow and green it's a bit like wiring a plug but nothing like wiring a plug so what other lines is there there's the Piccadilly line I think that's is that purple there's the Victoria line that's blue but it's a lighter blue that's a light blue the Piccadilly line is a darker blue I think the um, what other ones are there trying to think what other ones no, I can't remember green it's got to be a green line you'd think it's got to be green we'll look at the colours what have we got brown there's yellow there's blue green Pink? I don't think there's there might be a pink line but I'm not sure. Yeah. And there's red of course, central, which is the biggest it's like from one end to the other really. I mean the central line it goes from Ealing all the way through London to the is it Hainault? Kind of it basically goes from one end all the way through London. And there's I don't know how many stops there are, so like twenty six. But I might be getting muddled up between the central line and the alphabet. Sometimes happens. So what other things? Yeah, so I went to Victoria bus station. I had to go to um, the train station first like the overground well I, I went o underground first then overground which is the beginning of the very famous Wombles song underground overground Wombles are we the Wombles of Wimbledon Wombles are we something like that and uh, so I have a memory of walking up from the underground but I don't know if it's that memory is attached to going to Ireland because it might not be so I went there it's as if the person knows that I'm making a recording they're just doing they're making it louder it's almost like he's got a little what are those things you know the, the those tannoy systems that you you speak into and they uh, magnify your voice maybe he's got one of those and he's just holding it in front of the the prick that he's bashing which should be weird I'll tell you something though when I go down there later I want to see a house built because if there's nothing if it's just like a tiny little wall 
or a little rockery or you know anything less than a bungalow would be disappointing after all that disruption doesn't have to be a big bungalow is there such thing as a big bungalow I don't know but you know it's it's I mean clearly has to fit into the the garden there isn't a real garden it's just a patch of land tiny tiny little bit of land So I got to uh, Victoria Street or Victoria bus station and it's only a short walk from the train station and I quite like the big train stations such as King's Cross, Euston, Victoria Liverpool Street um, isn't really a novelty to me because I've been in there thousands of times it's just it's you know it's, it's I know Liverpool Street Station uh, just it's just I've been there so so many times since you know, I was young. That it's not um, doesn't really hold any anything with me anymore. I've kind of I've got a bit of a callous <laughs> a callous in my mind for Liverpool Street Station. I'm just used to it. But I quite like the other stations because they're old. Well, they're all old. all the train stations you know the big train stations are quite old and most of them I think have been re refurbished you know made nice and stuff I'm sure King's Cross had a huge refurbishment a few years back and I never really spent much time at King's Cross because it used to be famous for more for what happened outside the train station than what happened inside but I didn't really go there at night I think I did a couple of times you know because I was getting a train back and I needed to get a bus or something like that that's my excuse I'm going to give for wandering around in the streets at night but the what is it the I quite like the the old setup like the big high huge ceilings I mean massive ceilings of now they might have changed but I'm, I don't know but huge and there's that smell and I think some of the smell is still there from the past it might seem a bit weird but if you have a building and it seems to retain a smell so you know imagine in a hundred years time someone will be sitting here just thinking I can still smell that bloody ferret why can I smell a ferret <laughs> 
I don't know, dear. There's no ferret here. But I can smell a ferret. Well, why do you keep talking about it? You can clearly see there's no ferret. But I can smell a ferret. So did you used to own a ferret, did you, when you was younger? No. Well, how do you know what a ferret smells like? That's not the point. What is the point? Well, I'm kind of part of a, a mildly amusing joke. I don't really, I'm not re I, don't, I don't actually exist, neither do you. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So I went to Victoria bus station, got there, and I had, what did I have? Oh yeah, I had this, it's like a kit bag. That wasn't like a kit bag, it was a kit bag. And it was... Um, a bit like what you would have in the army. And it's a big, big bag, big, long, sausage shaped. And I put in, I took too much stuff to be fair, but in my mind, I was gonna go and live there forever. But it didn't, kind of work out that way as I ended up coming back after about five weeks but um, so I had all this stuff in the bag but not just my clothes but all of my yeah all of my um, diaries that I'd kept my writings that I had so I used to keep journals from 1988 or was it 89 something like that 1989 onwards so this was 1994 so it's five years worth of journaling and uh, I had material, stories, all kinds of stuff in there. So I had a big pile of pads. So I brought them with me to Ireland. I just wasn't gonna leave them. So this bag was heavy. I mean proper, proper heavy. And when I actually got into Ireland, when I arrived off the ferry in Dublin, they pulled me out. They, they the, the customs stopped me and took me into a little room. And started interrogating me, which is weird considering Ireland is, you know, we're basically related to Ireland here. And uh, they said, "What's in the bag? What's in the bag?" And I said, "Well, why don't you have a look? It's just there. Why don't you ask it?" And I said, it's just my stuff. And they seemed like really just like worried about me. And I didn't understand it really. And I didn't even have long hair anymore. And uh, perhaps I'd heard about my farting. Andre, Andre keeps doing that. So I just thought, oh, so I said, well, and they said, well, open the bag. Like, they didn't want to open it themselves. And I said, okay. And I said, what's in it? I said, just my pads and my pants. Pants and pads, the two Ps. And 
and they they seem confused right because and I took the stuff out I had to put it on a table and they they were looking at the books the pads like what well, what's this rubbish so it's not rubbish it's my journals why are you bringing that because I'm coming to Ireland to live which is allowed as you know there was no laws being broken there plus my grandmother was Irish so I think uh, you know I've got Irish descent and in the end they just said oh okay and uh, let me go and they yeah they phoned they phoned up um, yeah to because to, I only had a provisional passport like a it wasn't a proper passport it was a uh, I don't know what you call it. You used to be able to get a passport just to go abroad. Like, you know, just temporarily or whatever. Anyway, I went I went, and they let me through after phoning up somebody to confirm who I was. I don't know who it was they phoned. I forget. And I got in. Get it, got into the. I got off at Dublin. You know, I got outside, and my friend was there with his mum. I think they were in a van, and I think they'd got a friend to drive. Because it was a bit of a distance between, from uh, where was it? Dublin and Carlo, which is where I, I was going. And I got there, and uh, I think his mum on the way said, "Should we get get some chips?" I said, "I don't want chips." I didn't come to Ireland f to eat chips. And she said, what, what, what do you mean? I said, I do exactly that. I didn't come to Ireland to eat chips. I said, you're just obsessed with potatoes, aren't you? She said, no. But they are. <laughs> they are. No, they're not. So... Um, I think the very first night I stayed there I didn't stay at his uh, Andre's parents house because I don't even know why really but we stayed at his sister's house and me and Andre ended up staying sleeping in a bed but I think we'd gone to the pub as well because that was obligatory I think there was a rule in that town that you you weren't allowed to go to bed until you had at least at least six pints of lager or something and then I thought oh I've moved from London now I'm sleeping in a bed with a smelly man it wasn't really that wasn't really the life choice that I thought I was making. Because Andre's feet stunk. Seriously, he... When I first went round his house, because I kind of... I met him at work. And I went round his house and he was living with his sister. And... This is like 90... 92 1992 and 
I went round there and he he walked in and his sister shouted at him leave your shoes outside so he took his shoes off and I just went in with my shoes on which annoyed her but I didn't care because I wasn't going to take my shoes off and then she shouted again and your socks so his socks were so pungent that it actually attracted skunks we went out there and there was a skunk making love to with one of his socks so it's uh Yeah, I didn't expect to be in a bed with a uh, with stinky feet. And then we went and uh went to his house the next day and from then on I had my own bedroom, thankfully. It was cold. It was a cold, cold. It wasn't so much it was a cold house, it was just cold at night. And it was like old fashioned, proper bedding to keep you warm because it was cold. <laughs> and it wasn't even late in the year, it was what, September probably? Maybe October. No, September. No. August. Or something like that. So it was still... It was kind of the end of the summer. And... Uh, I can't believe it. I get up and have a cooked breakfast have a lunch have an evening meal and then at about nine o'clock supper which would be more food more cooked food it's like wow are you enjoying the background sound as much as me all day There'd be there better be a tower block out there. There'd be like the biggest building ever made. Wouldn't surprise me if it's just someone sitting in a chair, just literally just banging a brick with a with a trowel, just sitting there doing that all day. That wouldn't surprise me, really. So that was that was a surprise. And I remember saying to Andre's mum, I miss I miss my books. And she said, Oh we've got books here. And they did, they had books. But I think for for non book readers or people that aren't really aren't really into books I don't think they always realise that actually reading books isn't just about it being a book. It's about reading something that you're interested in. And 
with a wide library, you know, with a, not wide, but a, a wide selection of different books, I might find something that's uh, interesting, but... I suppose it would depend, but in, the, in I think there was one. I think it was was it Huckleberry Finn or Oliver Twist? Oliver Twist. Might have been. I don't know. There's a lady on the news right now. Her top is too pink. You know that level of pinkness, which is just too... It was partially hurting my eyes, how pink it is. I like pink, but I think I like a lower level of pink. More gentle, pastel-y. I like pastel colours. Because pastel really just it's like a like a dusty version, isn't it? Of a colour. Like a chalky like chalk on a blackboard when you was at school if you're over the age of forty. Or fifty, I don't know, depends. I don't know when they stopped using the blackboards and started using the whiteboards. Because for those that don't know what a blackboard is it's um, how to explain it it's basically this board and you know I'm just about to say that it's black you, you knew that didn't you obviously but you people like the um, the teachers would use chalk to write on it and they had a was it called a rubber or was it called an eraser or was it called a duster I don't know but they had this thing which was made of wood big quite a big thing that could fit into your hand you get your hand around it nicely and not all the way around um, but yeah, you get a good grip and on the on the bottom of it it had like felt or some kind of material which is quite vague isn't it which would wipe off the chalk see when I was at school I'm pretty sure it's all blackboards but it might not have been that's the honest truth I, I'm not 100% that it always was blackboards there might have been some whiteboards. There definitely was when I went to university. It was all whiteboards. There wasn't, I don't think, one... There wasn't one blackboard there. I looked around, couldn't see one blackboard. Just whiteboards everywhere. Not one blackboard at all. I was like, oh. Because then I think, what about all the chalk? What did they do with that? Because you used to be able to get packs of chalk. A little bit like crayons. Is it Crayola? They make crayons. But they were chalk. So you'd have a white chalk. A yellow chalk. A blue chalk. 
green chalk and possibly a brown chalk. I don't recall there being a red chalk, but there might have been. If there was, I possibly would have used that because that sounds incredible. I don't know why, just a red chalk. I can actually feel myself getting excited thinking about it. Can you imagine that? A chalk that's red. Now that is an impressive thing. But when I was at university, we had whiteboards. And one of the good little things you can do if you want to have a bit of fun is swap the pen over for a permanent marker. So the teacher's writing something on there and uh, then they go on to like a different subject, go to wipe it off and it doesn't doesn't go off. Yeah, it's fun. Or what you can do with the permanent marker is write something a bit naughty. Um, it could be anything. Teacher's got big boobies, something, whatever. And I remember I wrote down that. Teacher's got big boobies. And I remember the teacher saying, Jason, I said, yes. I said, he said, uh, I said, yes, Mr. Smith. He said, why did you write that? In a permanent marker so that I can't wipe it off. Why? First of all, I'm, I'm a man and I know I need to lose a little bit of weight, but, and yeah, I do wear a bra, but what's that? Why, why are you writing down that I got big boobies? That's just a bit, that's very rude. I said it wasn't me. He said, I can see you doing it. So what do you mean? He's, he said to me, well, you're there. You're doing it now. You're actually writing it as I speak to you. I said, oh, I forgot. What do you mean you forgot? I forgot that I wasn't invisible. Which is a pretty good excuse because people find it hard to argue with it. Sorry, I forgot I wasn't invisible. Because it kind of confuses people. It's like, what, what are you on about? Just like if you fart. So let's say you're on a date Let's say you're on a first date. Which is a time when I know a lot of people try and be on their best behaviour. Not this one, but you know, not me. But I know a lot of people would. That's when I play up the most. <laughs> I'm like a, I'm like a little child. That's when I play up first date it's the idea that I've got to behave myself that's that's when I don't <laughs> so if you do let off a fart during the first date an excuse you can make is sorry I forgot you were there
Now that might not sound might sound very nice, but it's it's funny. I actually did go on a date with someone once, and we went. She wanted to go into a shop to buy some light bulbs. <laughs> it was it was a f- first class date, and uh, very exciting. So I went into this store with her. And I left her to get on with the light bulbs because I don't like anyone enough to spend time looking at light bulbs with them. And so I wandered over to look at the, you know, the computer stuff. And then I just thought I had a look around. It wasn't anything I wanted, so I just sort of left the shop and started to walk home. I've forgotten all about her. Literally forgotten all about her. And she came out of the shop, sort of shouting my name. I said, oh, sorry, I forgot you. I forgot you were there. She didn't seem to be very happy about it. And it's not really, it wasn't really like a bad thing. It's just, I'm used to being on my own. I'm used to doing things on my own. And I just forget that other people exist. (laughs) There are other people there as well. (laughs) But uh, I'm going to leave you on that. I'm going to go. And I'm going to wish you a wonderful evening. Isn't it really, now that I've stopped the recording... The um, the little brick banger has stopped. I must stop banging the brick now. I'm going to go indoors and turn a tap on and watch the water for a few hours. So I think that's probably what they're going to do. And when, the, when I've done that, I'm going to... I'm going to put a sock on my hand and go into my bedroom. Why are you going to do that? Because I'm a private puppeteer. Oh, okay. Well, I thought you were about to... Okay, fair enough. What did you think I was going to do? Nothing, nothing, honestly. Nothing. Um, where's your brick? Well, it's, what do you mean? It's, it's in my pants. No, I said brick. Brick. As in what you were bashing earlier. Yeah, it's in, it's in my pants. <laughs> no, Brick. Oh, yeah, it's in the garden. I left it there. I put it somewhere safe so that it will be there for me tomorrow. Where did you leave it? I can't remember. Okay. Anyway, I'll see you later. Have a wonderful evening, day, morning. Bye bye. Bye bye. Biddly Bob.